Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Corporate Cowboys podcast. My name is Alex, and I'll be your host for the next 30, count them, 30 minutes. This we can treat as another uh, consultation if if you'd like. But really, uh, it, it's more an exploration into the mentality of, of a wage slave and then those that uh, are can identify but don't sympathize with wage slaves, right? So I found this one on anti-work. That's the r slash, it's a subreddit on Reddit. If you're watching this on video format, then you are essentially looking at what I'm looking at. So I found this on, on the subreddit r slash anti-work. And effectively, it's, Claiming that boomers are used to being slaves. Boomers are used to being slaves. And from the title, I, I get I get that it, it connotes a sense of uh of uh archaicness. Archaic is just old. This is like a like a sense of of a status quo from long ago that no longer is the norm. And yet still, some people adhere to it. Some people stick to it, are, are diehard wage slaves. They will put in work for this one company that doesn't value them until the day that they die. And one has got to ask why. Why do this? If the company doesn't value you, if the company doesn't value its worker the way the worker values the company. It's, it's offset. There's a disparity there between value systems that can be corrected, but I feel like uh, uh, this post in particular and a lot of posts in this subreddit r slash anti-work, a, a lot of these posts are more so just to whine and bitch about work conditions, but don't actually put out plausible solutions, right? I'm not saying that they have to be uh, reforming work conditions, right? You know, to make it a, a, a six hour work day, four days a week or whatever, like pushing that kind of legislation in the United States, the land of the free, the land of opportunity, it's going to be a hard fucking sell, right? So if you aren't setting those limits yourself, when you go to a company and apply for a job and you sign the dotted line you're taking whatever they give you if they put you to work if if you knew going in it's going to be 8 hours a day 10 days a week i'm being facetious it's going to be what 10 hour days 5 days a week right you you're going monday through friday and you you're logging in solid 10 hours solid 10 hours and getting you know 10 overtime you signed up for it. You walked in with both eyes with both eyes open to sign the dotted line. You got to come through or you can bounce or you can leave. The only other way around it is for you to negotiate, for you to wake the fuck up, for you to wake the fuck up and realize your own worth, not your self-worth, not not what you're worth as a human being, but what you're worth to corporate. To corporate. You want to be an indispensable piece to the organization. If you're just expendable, they could turn and burn you and find some other guy to fill your place, find some other person to fill your spot. So this post says, Boomers are used to being slaves. I met, well, it didn't say I met, but... I'm just, uh, I guess, re revising what they wrote here because every now and then, you know, some of the posters aren't great grammatically, but I will, I will give it an, an authentic try. Uh, I, I will read it the way it's written in order to preserve authenticity. It says, met my 70-ish year old neighbor today. She's retired but still works 20 hours a week, 
because her pension is not enough to cover basic life. She's had multiple cancers and is not in really good health. She works in a store, starts at 7 a.m., but she co- but she comes around 5.30 a.m., unpaid, so she would prepare everything that needs to be done by 7. I lost it, it says here. I lost it. Her managers come in at 8 a.m., She confirmed, LOL, in parentheses. She confirmed, LOL. Take their bonuses and spit out her measly three to four euro. And she's freaking proud of her sacrifice for the modern pharaoh. She's like, (laughs) modern pharaoh? What the fuck? She's like, but if I don't come, who is going to do it? Well... Is that your problem? And it's got three question marks. Well, is that your problem? Fucking three times questions. Three times the question marks. Shouldn't the managers worry about why there's no baked bread at 7 a.m.? Should they be paying their workers to arrive on time so that everything gets done? Is it really on a sick, is it really on a sick retired person getting paid scraps for part-time job to take care of those things? What do you think will happen when you have to stop working? These are all questions. Questions that the original poster, I guess, is, 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 is posing to Reddit, but I would like to think, you know, told the neighbor in reality. Again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, many, many of these posts... Um, they might highlight a certain, you know, condition or a circumstance, a situation within the workplace, within the institution that is corporate. They might highlight some type of circumstance and, and give a give a little narrative of like a, a a beginning, a middle, and an end. Something that either is resolved in a positive or a negative manner, right? Like some of the posters know how to write. I'll give them that. And then there's other posters who just come to bitch, come to bitch and whine. I personally would like to think that they went to the neighbor and asked these questions, having, you know, fucking sparking the neighbor's brain, having that light bulb go off, turn on, not go off, turn on in their mind, sparking them to think, you know, I'm fucking 70 and I get up earlier. I deserve more money for getting up earlier and ensuring when the business opens that it is ready to operate, right? That they're, they're, they might, this, this neighbor, the 70 year old neighbor lady, might as well be the manager on duty. So, should be able to negotiate for higher pay. Again, I, it, this sounds like it's somewhere out in Europe. So, I don't know what the setup is. Maybe uh, this neighbor lady is, 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 has got their own personal agenda of going to work and staying active and waking up that early and, and not wanting to be paid more, right? Maybe to them, it's it's personally satisfying and fulfilling. May or may not be the case, but otherwise, the person who is posting this, who is, is bitching about this condition that the 70-year-old neighbor lady finds themselves in, they could have just easily asked the neighbor lady these questions. Try to convince them to uh, self-actualize, try to influence them to think a little like a corporate cowboy, in a sense. I get that the circumstances are different given their ages, given the location, the region, somewhere out in Europe. I get it. I get it. But if this poster, the OP, if the OP is so concerned about the situation, why give it to Reddit? All right, continuing. There are, for this one, there are 323 comments for it. I'm only, I'm only given, I'm only giving the opinion that I think comes to mind when operating like a corporate cowboy, right? I already know right off of the bat. If I was that 70-year-old person, again, that this is this is all 
this would all be dictated by past life experiences. Maybe this 70-year-old knows nothing else but subservience. Maybe they know nothing else but subservience and they are happy. It says here that she's freaking proud of her sacrifice to the modern pharaoh, right? I get that modern pharaoh is, is meant to be used as a pejorative, is, is meant to, uh, to demean the business owner, but if she's freaking proud of the sacrifice she does for the business, then that obviously has to garner her, help her cultivate some type of reputation in whatever town this business find itself in. That's got to help. But if they can't put the pieces together that late in the game, they're 70 years old, if they can't put the pieces together themselves, then it's, it's incumbent on this OP who is apparently a poster to r slash anti-work. Don't just say the 70 year old should, I mean, they really aren't saying it, but why take it out on the manager when you could give it, don't, don't, how do I, how do I phrase this? Don't use your energy to demean the manager. Use your energy to empower the worker, right? Because all this post comes across as is just whining and bitching about somebody else's life that isn't, is not necessarily affecting you the poster. This original poster probably went to the bakery and that's how they know that her managers come in at eight o'clock and in parentheses, she confirmed LOL. They probably went there to the bakery, bought some bread and maybe didn't even tip, right? If they felt so fucking bad about it. Probably didn't even tip, picked up the bread, bounced, and then comes home to Reddit on some SJW shit, on some social justice tip, thinking... Oh, I'm gonna stick it to uh, I'm gonna stick it to the to the business owners, to the owners of the business. If the lady is making a living, even if barely scraping by, she ought to be grateful. She ought to be grateful. Now, if you don't think that's enough, if you don't think that's fair, then it's incumbent on you to befriend her, to empower her, to have her realize, to, to influence her and realize her self-actualization in life. And that's going to require you to get to know them personally, to get to know them professionally, to, to instill in them, to cultivate and develop some type of professional relationship that then allows them to think on professional terms. And that, that is a mission in and of itself, especially for somebody that late in the game, already in their 70s, 70-ish, it says, 70-ish. It doesn't sound like... This is a, a task that this OP is willing to take on. Otherwise, they wouldn't have come to Reddit and bitch about it. Let's review some of the comments, see what they're saying. The first comment here says, we have to understand they are working under a totally different system. Perfect, perfectly put, wonderfully put. The deal was, it says here, the deal was you lick your boss's boots and be loyal to the company. I mean... Okay, I mean, we're going to start off with the, with the pejoratives, with, with the demeaning verbiage. The deal was you lick your boss's boots and be loyal to the company. In exchange, you get a comfortable, livable, a comfortable, livable wage that supports an entire family, buys a house, car, health care, lots of vacation time. The bait and switch has happened now. Companies and boomers expect the same deal from their end about loyalty and devotion to the job while paying you shit way below a livable wage and no benefits. Our generation didn't change. The conditions of the deal did. And it no longer makes any sense to show up to some stupid ass boring job, it says here. It no longer makes any sense to show up to some stupid ass boring job and be loyal to a shit company when there's zero benefit anymore. Now, as crudely as that was put, it is obvious. It's obvious. If you're willing to sign on the dotted line and the deal you had went in expecting, right? The deal that you reviewed, the deal you shook hands on in order to sign 
your time away. I'm not going to say your life away because that's that's a little exaggerated. You're not signing your life away unless, hey, unless the contract says you can't compete afterwards, you can't fucking talk about it. There's a non-disclosure tied up to it, and 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 you're bound to it for a term of years, even after you're terminated, after you leave the company. Like you can't do shit for like five years or ten years or however fucking long, however fucking long you choose to sign up for, right? You're not giving your life away. You're giving your time away, right? And it makes sense that if you're not getting in return, if you're not being compensated in exchange for your time, if you're not being compensated a worthwhile amount, then don't do it. Then don't fucking do it. But this all goes back to the very first sentence. We have to understand the very first sentence here sums it up perfectly. And then everything else after that is just like, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a totally different system. So there having been the bait and switch necessitates people acting differently and prospective employees acting differently, even at that stages of application. When you apply to a company, you ought to treat the company like they are also applying to have you work for them. The interview goes both ways. That's why I don't understand and I've been in this position before early on where I'm interviewing and I don't have any questions for the interviewer, right? I've been on both sides of the interview. I've, I've interviewed with people and I've interviewed people for a position. But I remember early on, early on when I didn't have as much life experience, uh, 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 much professional experience, we'll call it, where my mindset wasn't, wasn't, wasn't as as efficacious, wasn't as professional oriented, wasn't as career oriented. That's the term I was looking for. Career oriented, right? I mean it's it's simpler than fucking efficacious, right? Because if, if you're being efficacious, you're asking questions and the questions are flying both ways. They're asking you questions, you're asking them questions, but that necessitates additional research beforehand to know the subject matter that's being talked about during and throughout the interview. And then at the very end, at the very end, you sum it up with a gut punching question. You want to get to the heart of the matter. You want to <laughs> <laughs> you want to crawl, crawl through the fucking chest of your interviewer to get, to get to the base of what it is they do for the corporation. And then continuing with the comment following it. So there is a reply to that comment that says, this is the cold truth. I just spent some time with my 90-year-old neighbor. He raised three girls, put them through college, paid in full by mom and dad. He built a huge all-brick ranch. He built a huge all-brick ranch? Damn. And put several additions on it before he was 40. He has been retired for decades now and lives quite comfortably. He hasn't owed anybody a dime in 40 to 50 years. He really can't understand why nobody is willing to show the loyalty and longevity to employers that they should and why they can't see what they are missing out on by being, <laughs> by being so disloyal and ungrateful. His wife was a stay-at-home mom with a fourth-grade education. Man, you gotta love tradition. He built TVs on an assembly line in a northeastern state. His mind and belief system are part of a different world that is not reality-based. Yeah, that, that world has long since been off, outsourced to, uh, to third world countries, third world and developing and other developing countries that have propped up infrastructure to be able to build TVs of slightly higher quality. I mean, because I'm sure this was what 40 to 50 years ago building TVs. They were still using tubes, right? And now, now we got LCDs. Now we got now we got HD LCDs. Those aren't being made. Those aren't necessarily being made here, right? They're put together overseas. So this is no longer based in reality. As soon as as soon as the job can just pick up and leave, you ought to be able to do the same and adapt accordingly. 
That's a corporate cowboy. You can't just you can't just let things fall and slip between your fingers and 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 then be lost in what depression or or lost on Reddit, having to bitch and whine about how work conditions aren't what they used to be. If they aren't what they used to be, then you need to pick up skills. You need to acquire skills, need to acquire the know-how, the knowledge and expertise, the logic and the tact to be able to operate in a manner that suits the 21st century. But, uh, you know, corporate cowboys are very few and far in between. This is essentially what I do in my day-to-day job, consulting, counseling, providing it professionally, legally, what have you. If you would like to get in contact with some corporate cowboys, you want advice of your own. I mean, besides just the free videos and the free content that you have coming to you, we have exclusive rights, personal rights that, that won't obviously won't be aired. It'll be kept between yourselves and us. And if you still want to, uh, if you still want to support the cause, the mission that is cultivating, developing leaders, leading leaders, creating corporate cowboys, by all means, you can donate, you can subscribe. The Patreon is active and there's multiple tiers. There's multiple tiers to do that with. If you want to shoot us a donation to keep this operation non for profit, there's a Venmo, a PayPal, a Cash App. It's all there. It's all there. Essentially, what you're doing is paying for admission to the corporate war. And the corporate war, it's it's a silent one, but it's still very much life and death. So it's not reality-based, they're saying. His mind and belief system, this, this other neighbor who built TVs, right? His mind and belief system are parts of a different world that is not reality based. He just can't process that TVs are built by people making a buck an hour in Southeast Asia now. Yeah, I I just said that and it's true. Or that a company will see you as a victim to be abused, underpaid and shit on. If you go out of your way to be loyal or accept the tiny little pay raises they generously offer if you ask for one. I explained that a company will tell you that they are going through a rough patch and can't afford to give you a COLA raise, cost of living adjusted, cost of living adjustment raise. Then hire somebody at $20,000 more to replace you after you left for a job that pays $20,000 more. So you keep moving on so they can't screw you over. He just listens, then looks at me like I'm crazy. Yeah, I mean, old heads, a lot of old heads, they came up in a time where workers had to be valued. Why? Because back then, the entrepreneurs who, who, who ran those factories, the entrepre- and they, they were entrepreneurs before they became you know, corporate magnates and, and, and conglomerates and that sort of thing. They were just entrepreneurs trying to make ends meet So they had to value the worker on top of dealing with unions, right? Unions were also strong 40 to 50 years, stronger 40 to 50 years ago. So it's reasonable, it's reasonable to think that conditions were quote unquote better back then, but they might've had little to no opportunity to do other things. Yes, they got the opportunity to, you know, go off and make a family, build a family and be done with it, but what do they learn that they were able to pass on to their family? Those kids that they put through college, I would like to know where those kids are at. Me being a social researcher, being a researcher first, a strategist, a, a, a tactician, I would like to know where those kids are at. What they're doing with their college degrees. And what their family is like. Do you think they're, do you think they're entry level somewhere or in middle management somewhere? Shit, they might be. And they didn't have the life experience that their parents did. Or the life experience of their parents didn't really 
serve them in obtaining those degrees or getting work might not have served them well to get the work and the degrees. Why? Because it's a completely different time. The struggle, the struggle changes. Circumstances change. Times change. That's obvious. That much is obvious. All right, so collapsing that comment, let's read a couple more just real quick. No, I don't want to award them anything, a wholesome award. Uh, somebody says, so them? What is this? Is this some type of label? Maybe that's a label for themselves. The, the next commenter, I guess, is a socialist Democrat or Democratic socialist. Gives a fuck. So when they were growing up, they write. So when they were growing up, I imagine there were a lot more mom and pop places that actually gave a shit about seeing their employees prosper. Everyone would run the extra mile to make sure the store survived. And at Christmas, the owners would give everyone a bonus based on how the company did because they actually cared about the well-being of their employees. That's not always true. But, I mean, if, if you have a tight-knit group and uh, the leaders, the leadership of these mom-and-pop stores, the mom-and-pop leaders of the store have some fucking brains, then they're going to look out for the team if they eat, everybody's eating, right? That world is dead, this person says. Now, corporate owns everything and they see the individual as a number to generate profit and absolutely nothing else. You get sick and I can't make money off you, get fucked. Rent goes up and you need more to simply live, not good for profit. So again, get fucked, it says. <laughs> the attitude carried over for most boomers. They think if I run the extra mile, they're going to take care of me when I need it. I scratch their back, they scratch mine. They won't, it says. They will throw you under the bus every time. Business owners used to care that the people that work for them be able to live well. Now, though, they only care about how little they can get away with paying them and still get the job done. That's late-stage capitalism. It's called... They're, they're putting a fucking label on it, late-stage capitalism. It ain't even capitalism at that point. At that point, it's not capitalism. If they aren't invest, investing, actively investing back into their source, into their source, which is a human resource, into their source for energy and time, that, that really ain't capitalism. Capitalism requires you to capitalize not just to extract profits. I mean, I feel like that's that's been the the, the largest misnomer, the uh, the largest twist in logic and theory that has come out of uh, quote unquote Western academia, quote unquote. <laughs> it ain't late stage capitalism. It's just that the systems that were put in place in the times of these mom and pop stores, like the school, like the the school system from back then. Raised workers, never taught them how to actually negotiate, right? Unless they were sent off to, I don't know, college and, and took up a business uh, management degree and it's an MBA of some kind, right? And even then, education changes with time across decades. So it says, the attitude carried over for most boomers. They think if I run the extra mile, they're going to take care of me when I need it. But then it says here that every single fucking time they get fucked over. It's late stage capitalism. Money has consolidated into the hands of those who don't care about people. Only profits as the system was designed. No, it's as the system has been used. The system is designed to accumulate capital, not profits. Anyways. Profits is just... Profit... Never mind. Never mind. That's a different. That's a different episode. That's a different episode. Somebody else says here, "Fuck their managers. These scum should be in jail for exploitation." But what? But that would mean a lot of managers w should be in jail. Which, by the way, they should be. Okay, whoever wrote that, maybe I had a hard time reading the comments, but 
sounds very childlike, <laughs> says, fuck her managers. These scum should be in jail for exploitation, but that would mean a lot of managers should be in jail, which, by the way, they should be. Okay, seems kind of redundant, kind of rhetorical. Do, do, do one more. One more here, and then I'll call it because, yeah, I, I mean, it, it just gets to the point where a lot, and it might have to be with this, with a this certain community on Reddit, the subreddit for anti-work. That might be just just a, just a pool of piranhas, and they see some food that gets dropped in. Somebody bitches and whines, and everybody's like, "Oh, the late stage capitalism!" Instead of actually instead of actually coming together with an idea like, "Hey, OP original poster, hey OP, why did you approach this seventy year old neighbor lady instead of just buying bakery goods off of her? Probably as soon as the shit opens up because you want your baked goods." Maybe instead of doing all that, you actually inform the 70-year-old woman. It sounds like she's still lucid if she goes to work every fucking day, if she's a two-time cancer-surviving savage. And you can inform her what her position could be like by advocating for her or empowering her to advocate for herself on some fucking corporate cowboy shit, OP. But no, instead, everybody wants to dogpile and circle jerk one another because, I don't know, fucking feelings feel better than, <laughs> feelings feel better than action. Feelings feel better than, than doing work. Man, these motherfuckers got the game twisted. It says here, boomers were raised in horrific systems. I have no idea how they accepted it without any nagging feelings. It's what they were raised in. It's what they were raised in what a lot of them were raised in and had no had no other recourse right especially when you go back to to uh to the way education was handed out right it's free from k through 12 public right and they only educated and inculcated workers factory workers at a point in time when that's what they needed that's what they needed now the u.s has been sitting on this on this <clears throat> festering it's a festering education system and it hasn't been innovated it hasn't been improved it hasn't even been updated for the 21st century for the for the for the data age for the digital age to work with computers and 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 be able to manipulate data and and show how to humanize corporate instead everybody just wants to dogpile on corporate saying good corporate bad corporation bad late stage capitalism man if that's what higher education is doing to folks nowadays higher education is doing folks a disservice but that's beyond me that's beyond the pale i'm going to cut that here that about is about 30 minutes. I might have gone over by a few, or maybe it's under by a few. But there, it wasn't so much that I was consulting, but giving an opinion. Giving an opinion of what empowerment could look like. What empowerment could look like. And this post is just an example of a lack. A lack of that. This post is somebody who, who went into the store, who went into the store, right? And apparently were appalled. Appalled by what they saw. They thought it was so fucking atrocious. It's an atrocity that this 70-year-old woman has to show up an hour and a half, an hour and a half early to do extra work and not get paid for it. And instead of actually asking them these questions, because, yeah, it sounds like... It sounds like they never asked them anything, right? They just went in, got their baked goods, got to know them a little bit, asked, hey, what time do the managers come in? And she confirmed, LOL, that they show up at 8 o'clock. Okay, nice. But then everything else beyond that, to me, to me is just a feel-good story. It's a feel-good story. And, and really, it's just, it, it's a form of, it might, it might serve as a form of catharsis for the OP to get their feelings out on Reddit, but it ain't helping the worker, now is it? Man, anti-work, anti-work, you're against the work, man, you got to fucking love the work, you got to appreciate the work, you have to know the work inside and out to get paid what it's worth, <laughs> man, I'll catch y'all later, a little proof of life, today's Saturday, August 6th.
2022. Have a nice weekend.